Hello there, it's Katrin Chong here. Welcome to another week of our Facebook Live. Uh, my name is Katrin Chong and I'm the fertility dietitian based in Brisbane, Australia. Now, whether you are planning to start a family or if you're currently actively trying to conceive or if you are currently struggling to get pregnant, I am here to give you simple, actionable, step-by-step -step nutrition strategies to bring you one step closer to your pregnancy dream. Let's get started with our today's episode. Now, today I have a very special episode for you because April is the awareness month of a women health condition called adenomyosis. So if you have been diagnosed with adenomyosis or if you know someone who currently struggling with these conditions, um, I would encourage you to listen in to the entire episode of today because I'm going to share with you the three diet tips the three simple action steps you can take to help to manage your condition better. Now, if you haven't heard of adenomyosis before, it is similar to another condition known as endometriosis. Adenomyosis is, is quite a common disorder, which is approximately affecting around 20 to 35% of women. Uh, the differences between endometriosis is adenomyosis is a condition where the, the cell basically grow within the walls of uterus abnormally of course um, as as the wall grow thicker it can cause pain and heavy bleeding and hence um, it definitely affecting you know a women uterus health and may potentially affect fertility down the track so for me personally i first came across this conditions um it's when um i receive a referral from a fertility specialist um to see a client with uh, this condition so adenomyosis and the doctors would like me to to help to better manage um this client's condition and also as well as optimizing her fertility diet so let's call this patient Cassandra. So Cassandra, uh, when I first met her in the initial consult, so Cassandra has been diagnosed with adenomyosis for about seven, year, seven years now. Um, as far as I can remember, she also planned to get pregnant soon because um, she has been told by her fertility specialist that she is uh, at a higher risk of infertility. So during the initial consult, I remember really clearly she described to me that her biggest struggle was dealing with that stabbing pain and heavy period that she needs to go through every month um she was prescribed to take a painkiller for a few years now however up until recently she noticed that the painkiller were not basically working anymore so she basically suffered from a lot of pain um, and she can't go to work her lower back it's really urging and I um and I remember seeing her through our virtual consultation. She needs a little support at the back of the chair and she just felt so bloated and nausea most of the time and literally during the, the, the menstruations period she has to lie down in the bed. Um obviously this has affected her life in big time, you know, having to cope with the pain every month that she needs to go through. Um, it also affects her relationship with her partner as well. Um, she basically just bursts into tears um, during the session. So, and again, this might surprise you, right? You would think that, okay, being a dietitian, during a dietitian consult is just basically go through, okay, what you should eat, what you shouldn't eat, and I'll put you through a diet program. But in fact, um, during a dietitian consult with me, it's really important for me to first understand you as a whole, like as a person, right? What are you currently going through in your life? 
what is your biggest struggle into your diets so in Cassandra cases because of the pain that she struggled with adenomyosis it has affected her life for sure but in terms of diet because of this um, she wasn't able to really have a very strict healthy eating routine and as you can you know probably you know understand from her story that or if you're someone from um, suffer from the same conditions you probably can relate to her as well the increasing amount of stress level is also affecting on the food decisions because for Cassandra in her case um, there are times that she definitely will emotional eats as well and that's kind of again affecting the weight and the overall quality of the diet so through that initial consult I can immediately sense that Cassandra is really in a stressful situation and there's a strong sense of that guilt that coming through her um, just imagine how you will feel if you really have no control over how your body reacts and she knows that she also needs to do better to really prepare for the pregnancy as well which is our next big goal so um by sharing with you you know the cassandra like cassandra story my client story so that's where i started i started to look into okay into the research is there anything I can help her to manage her condition better? And today, I want to share with you the three tips that may potentially help you to fight edemiosis. Or if you know someone that currently going through this, please share with them today's episode as well. Um, so, you know, so you are more clear about the action step you can take. All right, let's dive in to learn all about the three diet tips you can take to fight edemiosis. So let's have a chat about the research. Now, the initial research into edemiosis suggests that the approach is very similar to manage endometriosis. And here's what we know so far. Number one, the fruits and vegetables intake. I'm sure you're going to say this, Catherine, I already know this. I need to eat more fruits and vegetables. But when it comes to managing adenomyosis and endometriosis, there is a strong relationship between your fruits and vegetable intake, in particularly the brassica types of vegetables, which can be found to reduce your estrogen level. And this is relevant. Why? Because... The increasing amount of estrogen level have been linked with increased inflammation if you are suffering from adenomyosis. So you need to make sure that your diet is um, including um, you know, more regularly of brassica types of vegetables. So what I mean, such as cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, kale or Brussels sprouts. There are some of the good choices you can think about. Uh, now, on the other hand, by you increasing the amount of fiber, the other good thing is it also helps you to excrete the excess estrogen out of your body um, before it can be absorbed as well. So spot on, two benefits right there. So what you really need to do right now or in fact tomorrow is think about, okay, how can I include more fruits and vegetables, in particular the brassica type of vegetables in your diet. Now, next, they are also study showing that the use of pesticides on fruits and vegetables may interfere with hormone pathway and increase endometriosis symptoms. So what I mean is, the common pesticides that may use to grow the fruits and vegetables. And again, there are many different categories when it comes to um, pesticides, potentially can affect the hormone, how the hormone functions, and hence can also lead to uh, the potential adenomyosis syndrome. So what I would suggest at this stage is if financially allowed, um, you can consider buying fruits and vegetables from uh, an organic source perhaps 
or you can also source from a local farmer um, or even in the farmer's market. So that's certainly some action step that you can take. I uh, would also strongly encourage you to visit uh, the ewg.o website. So ewg.org uh, website. So they are an environmental working and research group, um, a group of scientists and, pro scientists and professionals where every year they actually look at um, the they study the amount of pesticides in different food and produce and they publish every year an updated shopper guides for you to find out which are the top 15 um, fruits and vegetables they are considered the most clean and also the kind of top 15 uh, list of 30 what they call 30 dozen fruits and vegetables so if you're interested to have more information on that i would strongly recommend you to also visit ewg.org website to find out what is the top clean 15 uh, fruits and vegetable list that you can also possibly looking into having them enjoy them more in your diet now Number three, so now that you understand why you should include more certain type of vegetables and possibly source from organic produce, let's talk about antioxidant. So antioxidants are needed to basically help to neutralize free radicals. If you've been listening to my previous um, episodes about fertility nutrition, um, quite often you heard me talking about antioxidants as well. Um, so the reason why is because why do you need to have more antioxidant in your diet? Because basically uh, when you think about if you do have a high level of radicals, it can lead to even higher oxidative stress and inflammation. So just imagine if you do have more fruits and vegetables, um, which are known as the natural source of antioxidant from fruits, basically it can help to neutralize the free radicals and reduce inflammation, right? So another reason for you for sure, if you're someone that really dislike having vegetables or not even having any fruits in your diet every day, uh, some practical tips for you is number one, making sure that your lunch and dinner always have at least roughly about half a plate of your vegetable. And secondly, probably it will be good for you to start to include one piece of fruits as a snack just to get started to optimize more fruits and vegetable intake, all right? Now, um, you can also consider taking um, an antioxidant vitamin such as C and vitamin E supplement to boost your antioxidant intake. Uh, but before you make any changes, I would strongly recommend you to see a fertility dietitian to really assess your medical conditions, um, your diet, your overall health before recommend you which is the best approach for you. All right, my last tip for you today is um, in terms of helping you to manage endomyosis. Uh, the last thing for you today is you can also think about um, optimizing your fats intake. So what I mean is, first of all, you've got to ask yourself, okay, looking at your day-to-day -day eating routine, are you having too much of trans fat or having products that have refined oils, which are known as the unhealthy fats? Um, the reason why, again, is because it does increase that inflammatory response in your body. So how do you know whether you are having too much? The easier ways is you want to ask yourself this, okay, how often do you have red meat? Or how often do you have highly processed food? Like for example, could be, um, could be salami, could be sausages, or think about, okay, do you often have um, like, a, okay, um, really sugary coated um, biscuits or buttery or creamy foods or things like that. Um, the reason why is because if you do have too much of trans fat in your diet, like I said, it will increase the inflammation in your body and has been linked with um, triggering that endometriosis symptom. So the best way that you want to minimize this is by reducing the unhealthy fats. But at the same time, there's something really important for you to do. So we don't always just um, eliminate the food. 
we need to restore the food, um, the right type of nutrients and food back into your body, which is the omega-3 fats. So omega-3 fat, you hear me keep talking about this pretty much every episode. So the wonderful thing that omega-3 can do for you is basically it adds like an anti-inflammatory fatty acids. So uh, where can you get omega-3 fats? Uh, you can get them from oily fish such as salmon, trout, tuna. You may also get from the plant-based source, uh, but again, it is um, harder for your body to convert into the actual omega-3 fatty acid. If you're someone who don't really enjoy eating fish in your diet, so I'm talking about at least about twice a week, um, say about two fillets of fish a week. If you don't really enjoy that amount of fish in your diet, then I would suggest to consider an omega-3 supplement. There you have it. We have covered quite a bit today. Let's recap what you have learned. So here's the three, here are the three things that may help to manage adenomyosis. So number one, I want you to start eating more vegetables and also fruits, in particularly the brassica types of vegetables like cabbage, broccoli and cauliflowers. And number two, you may also be benefits to minimize the exposure to pesticide use in food by considering buying organic source of fruits and vegetables and if you are interested to find out more about that clean 15 list of food you can visit the website called ewg.org that's where you can see what is the most updated list of top clean 15 list and also the top um, Dirty list of food. Now, number three, and the final tips for you today. Also, you need to remember to reduce trans fat intake and swap with the healthy fats like the omega-3 from oily fish. Remember, it is impossible to do everything all at once. So I would strongly encourage you to start with something that you can easily implement today. Now, now is the time. <laughs> I want to hear from you. So tell me, tell me which are the tips from what you have learned today that you're going to implement right away. Share with me in the comment down below. I would love from you. Before I go, if you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to press subscribe to our channel so you always get notified when we go live. And remember to share this video with your friends and family as well. I would also appreciate you to leave a review on our channel, on, on our Facebook page. Thank you so much for joining me today. I will see you again next week, same time, same place. Bye for now.